I'm anxious, I'm angry, I'm tired. We and so many other rural communities have been fighting these ongoing battles for years, while the decisions for our future viability and your food production are being made in the air-conditioned offices of Macquarie Street in Canberra, with mining lobbyists on the political merry-go-round having financial fun with their mates. And the total of new or extended mines in the planning and approval pipeline covers an area larger than Adani. And time is running out. I remember being struck as a kid, because growing up in Marundi, there's not a lot of coal mining going on in Marundi. You've got the beautiful valley, the mountains, the, you know, the eucalypt forests out the back, and going down to see Dad at work. Uh, and this was at the Ravensworth mine. And I remember even being as a really young child being struck about how unnatural it was uh, and how Martian it was and how it was a landscape devoid of life and populated with giant machines that didn't make any sense to me. And I, ever since that first visit, I realised that that's not where I wanted to spend any of my life. We, uh, we in the Hunter Valley have spent a bit of time trying to keep the coal seam gas out and the, uh, the uh, local large holes in the ground that trying to prevent them from being larger. You'll be pleased to know that there's a bit of fight in the old wine community yet, and we're taking them on again, and we want to, we want to try and beat this and keep all that stuff well away from something that's really sustainable and really important, worth half a billion dollars to the Hunter region economy, half a billion dollars a year to the Hunter Valley. That's at the moment, and it's been growing ever since I've been there for 33 years. It's all very well to say we need to stop coal mining because of climate change. But when people in the Hunter Valley hear that, they just, they just feel afraid. They think, what are you talking about? Why are you trying to shame me for my livelihood? Why are you trying to take away what, what means something to me? And I would just encourage all of you to include the fight for a just transition, for investment in the Hunter Valley, for new jobs and opportunities as part of your advocacy on climate change, because we're not going to get action on climate change without a just transition. This is not only a black fight, and it's always been a black fight about country, about land and place and the importance for us, but now it's also a non-Indigenous fight. Stand beside us, you know, not in front of us, not behind us, but with us, side by side. There's nothing that the government doesn't fear more than seeing both black and white coming together, standing strong, you know, against the wrongs that we are now facing in our days. I look at all these little ones here, you know, our gangles, our little babies, you know, they're our future. And it's on us because what are we leaving them? You know, not only them, their children's children's children. I want to finish with a story about this case, which not many of you will know. So I went to land in Marama Court. Um, the other side turned up with their raft of lawyers. And I just wanted to tell you this story because I think it demonstrates just how far we've come in 12 months. Those lawyers laughed at us when we said we wanted to run a climate change ground about an open cut coal mining cluster. Well, they're not laughing now. <laughs> Rocky Hill was a landmark decision, and it's great, it's fantastic, but that's about one fifth of the size of what's proposed at Mylong Valley. 25 years, they tell us coal's got to be outdated by 2030, like do the maths on that, 25 years from now, it's past expiry date of coal, so who knows what's going to happen, but we've got to take a stand. We've got, we've got to draw a line in the sand somewhere as a nation and take a stand against it. And here is our opportunity now. I, I, I just, heard, just heard a ter term the other day of tipping point. I think we are now at a tipping point as a nation to stand up and say enough is enough. So it is time to choose, and the choice is very, very clear. Ignoring the fact that there are 10 new and expanding coal mines, and the Darnie's worth of coal mines currently under consideration and seeking approval in the New South Wales Department of Planning is not an option.